So welcome everybody. We're going to uh, we're going to start for the evening, uh, and to get us going, Jay, do you want to lead us off? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, likewise, welcome to everybody. Um, to to be here tonight to kick this off to say that I'm excited would be a major understatement. This particular plan, this cultural economy plan that we are calling Mosaic Lowell. We were looking to kick this off a year ago, but I think a few of you will understand why we didn't. And so here we are a year later kicking this off. But the, this will be the first of a variety of different meetings that we're going to have. Um, we'll be having more in-person meetings throughout the course of the city, uh, throughout, throughout the entire city. But the whole idea in what we hope to accomplish, not only tonight, but in, in days to come, is to engage the entire community within the city of Lowell. The city of Lowell has tremendous assets uh, with tremendous potential with all those assets. And through this plan that we will all create together, uh, we are looking to leverage those particular assets to produce a vibrant, inclusive, and cultural economy plan for all stakeholders in the city of Lowell. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that we can do this. I have no doubt in my mind that we will do this. And we will do this collectively together. And as we embark upon this and we look out to engage everybody, I wanna thank the folks that are on the call tonight. And I'm gonna in advance thank folks that are gonna participate later. And I'll talk a little bit about that later in this particular program. But um, welcome, welcome and thank you for joining us what I think is a, a, a tremendous opportunity for this city and we can make it as great as we want to. And I know that we will, so thank you. And I think up next, may I introduce a colleague of mine, Allison LeMay, who's the executive director of the, of the Lowell Plan. Allison, over to you. Thanks, Jay. Um, I, I'm equally delighted to be here um, and so excited that we're kicking this off. Um, as Jay mentioned, this has been a long time coming and. Though we had a pause, it's great that we're able to jumpstart this again. I can't think of a better time to jumpstart this effort um, and delighted to have you all here. Um, I'm not gonna add too much more to what Jay said because he summed it up perfectly, um, but I just wanna note that um, we're gonna spend about the first half hour or so doing a lot of talking. Um, and then we've set aside the second half of the hour to do a lot of listening. And we really want to give you a chance to ask questions, give us your feedback. Um, but at any time throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat feature, make comments, ask questions that way. Um, we really want this to be engaging. Um, there's, there's a nice group of us here. We, we all, many of us know each other. So please feel free to interact that way with us throughout the uh, course of the evening. Um, so I'm gonna just turn it right over to Latifa Phillips, my colleague at the, um, at, um, the Lowell Public Schools and um, she'll get us started, Latifa. Have to unmute. Good evening, everyone. I'm Latifa Phillips. I'm the Chief Equity and Engagement Officer and just really honored to be a part of this team and one of the co-chairs. Um, I just want to take a moment to um, introduce our, our steering committee and, and we've got our photos and names there, um, but, but we really want you to know that um, we represent different sectors of the city, um, different perspectives, um, and it's really important for us that, that we have a, a um, a diverse committee that is really thinking through every every part of this process and looking forward to bringing on um, you all in an advisory committee to um, really help us to be successful in the planning of the cultural economy. So let's see if you We're want. just pausing here so you can see everyone's <laughs> great headshot. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, you know, some of you may be asking, well, why is Mosaic Lowell, the, the cultural economy, important to Lowell? And, um, you know, I work with the public schools. So, so for me, I'm always thinking about what is the legacy we're developing and leaving for our children. And, you know, just working with this group and working with others in the community, um, you know, one of the things I've come to learn is just there are so many um, rich resources, um, arts and cultural resources here in Lowell. Um, and, and it's important for, for our community members as well as people who might be coming in to visit the city to know what all is here. And the cultural e economy um, 
it, the cultural planning is really a public process in which representatives of our community um, undertake a comprehensive assessment and create a plan um, of implementation for future cultural planning. So it's a plan that helps us take account of our cultural assets in the city and strengthen our economy by leveraging these assets. So it's economy and it's culture, right? Um, it's our intentional effort to facilitate um, deeper social cohesion um, and celebrate the vibrancy of our community by focusing on what's, what makes Lowell so great in the first place, our culture. So we're taking um, an equity approach, you know, in um, ensuring that our diverse racial and ethnic communities are recognized in civic life, um, equitably served by arts and cultural offerings, um, equitably invested in. So um, again, this is an intentional process. It can't be accomplished um, without integrated leadership by the arts and cultural organizations and businesses um, that re represent and serve our diverse communities in our city. And ultimately, we wanna create opportunities and systems that enable true economic activity and growth for, for our stakeholders, for our community, for our children. And so that's why we're here today. We're looking forward to partnering with you. And um, some of my colleagues are gonna, are gonna talk to you more about, about our collective vision and why they're a part of this. Cool. And Bora, do you want to lead us off with a kind of a quick right. statement why you're involved? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my name is Bora Jim Room. I am the executive director of LTC. I want to share why uh, with Mosaic Lowell. I mainly want to be a part of the change to change the perception of Lowell outside of Lowell. Um, I've been given a wonderful opportunity with LTC. I see LTC as a creative and artistic organization. And as we progress with the planning, I want to use this amazing platform that we have to empower, connect, and inform the community, which is also our mission of LTC. Um, personally, I'm a Khmer woman that appreciate my culture and my identity. And I want that culture to be representative in well in the discussion because representation is really important to me and dear to my heart. And mainly I wanted to showcase the multifaceted diverse culture of, um, of Lowell. So with that being said, here's a video of what LTC covered pre-COVID.
I don't know about you all, but who wants to just shut down the video, go out and play in the streets? So many fun things. Sarah, do you want to tell us why you're involved? Sure. So um, I'm actually glad that I went after that video because that just show, that just explains everything, right? That's like, you know, that video shows how much we have in the city of Lowell, all the, all the different events, the different um, ethnic culture, different, you know, neighborhoods that we have in the city and why I'm part of this. Um, this um, subcommittee or, or this mosaic is because we have so much to offer and I want to be a part of that, you know, that new um, creative team that is going to showcase um, Lowell as the destination city for, for the state, for New England and for, for the country basically, because we could be, we will be that destination city and I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, with the with the with the help of this group and then of course all of you who are participating i know we we will be there one day so thank you um sarah can you tell us who you're what you're associated with who you're associated oh i'm with? so sorry <laughs> i was so excited after the video i'm sarah kuling and i uh, represent um uh the office of congresswoman Lori trahan okay thank you thanks sarah Allison, tell us why, tell us how, tell us what. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I love that video. So glad we got to see that tonight. Um, so um, Latifa covered a bit about why cultural planning is important. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how we believe um, the Mosaic Lowell can elevate the many arts, cultural and creative economy assets that we have in the city. Um, so the, the first piece is we really believe that this plan can help um, enliven all of Lowell as a place to live, work, and visit. Um, we all know we have a really strong and vibrant um, uh, activities and events that happen in our central business district downtown, um, and we want to continue to celebrate those um, and support those types of events. But we also want to find more opportunities to bring arts and culture into our neighborhoods. Um, uh, enliven things that are already happening um, and provide support um, and opportunities to do more in our neighborhood districts. Um, we also want to increase the visibility and strengthen the infrastructure of our uh, many cultural, creative, and artistic organizations. Um, we want to kind of understand a little better about what resources and support systems already exist and where there need to be more um, and where there's opportunities for collaboration and resource sharing. Um, we have such a diverse um, diverse types of organizations here. Some really grassroots and community driven. Others are kind of larger formal institutions. Um, so there's different degrees of, of sort of resource needs and we want to figure out that a little bit better and how we can uh, leverage more of that. Um, the plan will also give us an opportunity to build equity, um, as Latifa mentioned, by elevating opportunities for all by bringing new attention and resources to them. Um, as we know, and we just saw in that great video, there's so many cultural assets in Lowell. Um, and we want to continue to support our um, incredible formal institutions, our museums, our amazing venues. Um, and like I said, also our smaller community led initiatives. We have many sort of small grassroots DIY type activities and we want to support those as well. Um, we want to help bring new revenues to the city of Lowell and its residents by creating enterprises through increased visitorship. Um, sales, attracting new businesses, and hopefully more tax revenues. Um, we don't have some of the traditional um, tourism tax bases that other communities have, like hotel rooms. Um, and so we have to be a little more creative and think outside the box. How can we kind of align some of the ways we do attract tourism to the city um, to support our existing businesses, our museums, um, and how do we bring in new businesses? And then also involving youth in schools is really vital. Um, developing the creativity and arts education are really key elements um, to, to this plan. We know that engaging young people is important, not just because of the value that arts have on our, on our health as individuals, um, because, but also because it will help build a pipeline of future artists um, and patrons of the arts in the community. And then finally, we want the plan to help position arts and culture in the creative economy as a core element in any future 
um, strategic planning that the city of Lowell does. And by embedding uh, the creative economy in our local planning initiatives, we hope that it'll ensure it continues to play an integral part in Lowell's future. Um, so I'm really excited um, to turn things over to Susan Silverberg from Civic Moxie. Susan is the consultant that's working with us to help develop the Lowell Mosaic. And she's gonna share some examples of the impact that arts and culture planning can have in communities. Susan? Thank you, Allison. Um, I just want to say we are so delighted to be working on this project. We are a full service planning firm. Uh, we do economic development, revitalization, master plans, waterfront planning, um, and we have a deep expertise in arts and culture. And this is one of the most exciting projects we've worked on because of the, the real kind of intentional work about rooting this in the community across the community. And uh, that's really important to us as a full service planning firm, we see arts and culture touching everything in the city. So I want all of you to really think outside of the box a bit um, about what it can touch. We like to say that it moves uh, arts and culture upstream in the planning process to really influence kind of everything that's happening. So one example, and some of you may know Artists for Humanity, arts and culture um, really affecting youth um, mentorship and professional development. That nonprofit in Boston works with Boston high school youth. They are employed at a minimum of $15 an hour and get mentorship in a host of creative jobs, graphic design, photography, painting, screen printing, and they go to work. So um, they are contracted, major corporations, philanthropy, um, private individuals to do work, corporate brochures, annual statements, t-shirts, public art, and they learn that trade. Um, and almost all of them go on to accredited college programs when they're done. And it is uh, really exciting to see the impact of arts and culture within that community. Another project that I wanna talk about is uh, filling vacant storefronts um, and thinking about economic development. There's a striking project in, in um, a project called Renew Newcastle in Newcastle, Australia that takes the kind of pop-up storefront that we all know to another level in looking at all of the creative people uh, searching by location on Etsy and, and calling them all together and saying, would you benefit from free space and communal space within the downtown? There were over 150 vacant storefronts on the mile uh, of the main street in Newcastle, a post-industrial city, um, and bringing them together and working with landlords and branding the city as a place for makers and creatives. Um, their economic impact statement that was done by a local university showed a return of uh, $14 in community benefits for every dollar that was spent on that program. So really deeply impactful. Um, so those are just two examples of kind of a range. Um, and I think uh, Howard's going to talk about another. Yeah, I'd like to, I don't know if any of you have been to Salem Mass recently, but there's a neighborhood in Salem called The Point or El Punto, which is remarkably similar in a lot of ways to The Acre in that it, it's been a very um, neighborhood that struggled a little bit, great people, but it's been a, economically challenged in a lot of ways. They, the city of Salem partnered with their CDC in Salem to literally make this a destination by working with muralists and artists from all over the world. And this is not a, pro I'm not bringing this forward to present another mural project. Heaven knows there are plenty of mural projects afoot in Lowell right now. This is more a question of how do you transform a neighborhood by bringing art, by bringing culture, forward in the neighborhood and they've done an amazing job with that and i'm actually hopeful to happy to go down with anybody anytime to see how different the neighborhood looks i walked peter and i walked it the other day and the clear care the clear um interest people have in keeping their their, their places looking fantastic keeping the streets clean keeping the alleys clean there's clearly a sense of pride which is just really exciting to see having seen that neighborhood be in a really tough place even a few years ago so it's a great example how art and culture can truly transform a space. Latifa, do you want to walk us through the, the planning principles? This is key as we look at how we undertake this plan. Sure. Do you want to hear Henry as well? Oh, sorry. Please, Henry. Okay. 
Do you want me to go ahead or should we pause for um, Henry? It looks like Latifah is first and okay. then me. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that, that works. So um, I wanna talk about our planning principles because these really are guiding the work of, of our committee and this, this larger you know, initiative project. Um, we have eight here. I wanna start with dream big, right? Because this is really, um, we're dreaming big with this, this project. Um, but I, I wanna highlight some others. So this really is about welcoming, engaging, and hearing all equally. It's about pulling in voices that we haven't heard before. Um, number two, respecting community knowledge. So again, we, we saw that map um, that displayed all of the resources, the incredible um, assets across our community. And we wanna make sure that we are, we are highlighting and honoring um, all, of, all of the resources across the community. Um, we wanna encourage collaborative problem solving and resource sharing, just really working together um, to make sure we're benefiting all of Lowell neighborhoods and communities because our resources are located across the city. Um, we wanna focus on, on the benefits and positive outcomes um, and really identify a path forward. So, um, you know, I, it's hard for me to separate myself from the public schools because I'm thinking about, you know, 14,000, you know, 15,000 children living in this community. And, and um, it's really exciting for me to think about, um, you know, how we can plan um, and, and let our, our students, you know, just know what's here, what they're a part of, you know, what, what Lowell has to offer, not only for, for our residents, but for, um, for everyone around us. So these, these planning principles really are criti critical. We're approaching this with, with an equity lens and really trying to figure out, you know, who's at the table, whose voice hasn't been heard and how do we ensure that, that everyone has um, an equitable opportunity to, to be involved, be represented um, within, within the, um, the mosaic wall. Thanks, Latifa. All right, Henry, now you're on. Uh, hi, my name is Henry Marte. I, the owner of a photography and video production studio in here in Lowell called Marte Media. And I'm also the marketing manager for Western Avenue Studios and Lofts. Uh, part of like why I'm involved, I'm a firm believer in community and uh, we should all do what we can to benefit the community because without community, we will be lost. And I feel like as an artist and as a person of color that we need that representation in any sort of creative economy plan in Lowell. Thanks, Henry. So I wanna just give you a really quick synopsis of kind of where we are and how we got here. Um, and I'll try to be as brief as possible. Two years ago, Alice and I discovered we were each paddling around the city, talking to people, kind of asking about the cultural economy here. And so we started working together on that. And we had an initial tentative conversation with the Barr Foundation in Boston because Barr had about, about three years prior to that launched what they call the Creative Commonwealth um, Initiative with five community foundations uh, around, the, around the state to help build up the cultural economies. They hadn't undertaken one with Lowell at that point because they really didn't, they didn't at that point find the right, right face for that. Allison and I had a, a conversation in a coffee shop thinking this would be the very first step and we were invited in, in the meeting to apply for a grant. We came forward to them with a, with a grant request and they said, well, that looks great, but I don't think you're asking us for enough money to do the things you really wanna try and do. So we asked them for more money and they gave it to us which is what's been able to give us lead funding to really get this all started, to be able to hire Susan, to be able to hire Peter, to be able to have some project money, to be able to do all the mapping and all the things, the, just the, the things we need to do to get this all set up. We're very excited about that. We look forward to maintaining the partnership with the Fire, Fire Foundation going forward because they absolutely have the lens that we you're hearing from all of us about equity building, about community building, about working from the bottom up, as opposed to saying, okay, people, here's your new cultural economy plan. We, that's the, ad, the adverse of what we're trying to do. Uh, we got a little slowed down by COVID, but we have restarted. We recruited Latifa on the team and then recruited the whole steering committee. We just hired, you know, after a whole bunch of interviews, we hired Susan and we're very pleased to have her and Civic Moxie on board. Uh, we just added Peter, who is the former company manager and producer with MRT. So he brings a great arts background to the program. So we have a really good group now. Now we're in the process of, of gathering data, mapping data, 
but more importantly, starting conversations with everybody like this tonight to begin the process of, of engaging people into this work because it'll only work if we bring a lot of people forward. I think the, the one thing I want to underscore in all this is the intent of this plan is not to write a big pretty plan with a lot of graphics that are going to get put up on the shelf. This is going to be a working document that's got to have goals and it's got to have your goals. It's got to have our goals. It's got to be something, it's got to be forward facing and it's got to be thinking one year, three years, five years, 10 years of how can we help. You know, the, the nuggets at the end of the rainbow are things like having the city really want art and culture as part of the master planning because that it is one of the things that can make Dole Lowell that much more attractive of a destination in the long run. So we're really excited about this. We're really grateful for you all being here tonight. I know Susan's gonna talk about more process as we go forward, but I just really wanted to just underscore how much we are emotionally engaged with this as well as just doing work and how much potential we see in this to achieve some great things for Lowell on multiple levels. So thank you. Susan. Tell us more. Um, so if you can switch to the next slide. Oh, OK. Um, so where we're going and what we're doing. So we've been hired to advise on the project. Um, we actually started in February. And I think that that's really important. Um, most projects just you know, kind of form a steering committee. It's who's around. They get started. There has been just a lot of work and thought put into how do we structure this project to have deep involvement from the community? And how do we leave room to have flexibility as we move on to make sure we're bringing, I was going to say bringing new voices to the table, but I think what we're really trying to do is go to different tables within the community and meet the community where they are. So really trying to plan in a different way. And now that we're at this point, this is the first meeting we're having with all of you. Um, and we are in the process of reaching out to engage uh, first round of folks. Um, we're also uh, doing our kind of cultural inventory. So we're starting mapping, we're starting, we'd like to create an inventory of creatives within the community, businesses um, that are cultural. And we have a very broad definition of arts and culture. It's everything from very traditional, um, fine arts, public art, music, um, to what we would call kind of local traditions and craft uh, and media, kind of everything in between. Uh, I would say we're, we're kind of making it self-defining in many ways. And so we're creating, uh, really trying to understand what's in Lowell, uh, mapping it, uh, creating lists so that we can understand all of the assets and try to reach out and engage people. Um, and, and that's really about a needs assessment. What, do, what do, does everyone want? What do they need? How can we align some of those needs and think about how do we support them? Um, and we'll be doing that from now through the fall and, um, and then working on iterations of what are goals and strategies that we can all work together. And this really is a working plan. We specialize in working plans, uh, keeping plans off the shelf. Um, that's the Moxie in our firm name, Civic Moxie is like, how do you keep things going? And we uh, will be looking at uh, what that is. And then the next steps are lots of listening, really meeting people where they are, um, thinking about how to disaggregate outreach, if you will, to really capture a lot of people, um, and then identifying resources to move forward. And how do we get this plan into action? Thank you, Susan. Um, I inadvertently missed Safan in the agenda, so I wanted to take a step back and let Safan speak to why she's involved. Good evening, everyone. My name is Safan Smith. I am the executive director of Dream for All. We're a nonprofit organization that's really dedicated to turning dreams into businesses. And actually, one of our alums are here this evening, Ray Mate. And I was asked to not only join this committee, but the part of the reason why is because I am a Lowellian. I love the city of Lowell. This is where I was raised. And when people ask where I'm from and why I love Lowell, because I talk about Lowell a lot. I spent about 15 years working in Boston. And I explained to folks that Lowell is one of those cities where there's so much diversity and different cultures and different ethnic backgrounds that you actually don't need a passport to travel the world because the world is right here. I grew up 
going to the folk festival, volunteering with it and so forth. I grew up seeing just so many different cultures, experiencing different foods and really never having to leave the 978 area code. And I want others to experience that, enjoy low as much as I do as well. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you, Saban. And I, I think that was a good indication. You probably should just fire the DJ because then we would, we would be ashamed if we missed that. So. Um, Lastly, before we close, I want to, uh, Connor, can you tell people why you got involved? Thanks. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Connor Baldwin. I'm the chief financial officer for the city of Lowell. Uh, and why I'm involved in this project, uh, I am an enthusiastic supporter of all things Lowell, generally. Uh, but specifically, the creative economy being one of them. My dad is a, a local radio DJ, and so from a very young age, uh, it was drilled into my head the importance of culture and the arts um, and, and how that relates to the city. So that's how I grew up and that, that's what has been important to me. Um, I work at City Hall and I see every day how the cultural economy uh, drives revenue into the city, how that allows us to provide the services that we provide to the residents, uh, whether it's meals tax or the hotel tax, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm also a student of history, and I know that many of the major revitalizations in Lowell were driven by uh, the cultural economy, the Lowell National Historic Park being the one uh, that is most important in my mind, and I see this project as the next big thing. So that is only going to happen with all of the input of all of you, and I see a lot of faces of people uh, that are important to the cultural economy, and I'm hoping this is a good segue for you, Jay. Uh, it, it's only going to work if we have everybody's help. Oh, Connor, thank you so much for setting me up for that one. Because ultimately, you're right. I mean, you folks listening here tonight saw the steering committee, and we've got a great steering committee. But we've got a great group of <clears throat> folks here tonight as well. But the fact of the matter is we need help. We're going to need help all across the city. And we're going to need help in a variety of different ways. Uh, we're going to need folks that understand this plan, happy to come to additional events that we have, which we'll have as the summer progresses and into the fall, uh, to be ambassadors of this. Uh, there's folks that are going to get on the phone and follow up with us and share ideas. But we've got other types of things that, I mean, in some instances, we don't know what we don't know. Um, we need folks to tell us what it is that we do need to know. And if you've got ideas and you want to get engaged even more, there'll be an opportunity as a follow-up to this whole thing. There'll be an email that goes out and asks folks if they want to get engaged. And we want folks to be engaged at a variety of different levels. We're going to have folks that are, I'm hopeful we want to get engaged in a more content way, in a more idea way, in a way working more closely with us. And we will be respectful of that time, honor that time, and, and, and accommodate appropriately. And then there'll be folks, again, on maybe the other end, that just want to be, keep apprised. They want to know what's going on. They want to spread you know, this information. One of the things I want everyone to do, it's this second bullet here. When, when you're done from this and you go to work tomorrow or maybe you go out to dinner tonight or whatever you do over the 4th of July weekend, tell somebody about this. Say, by the way, I went to this cool little Zoom on Wednesday night and they got some great ideas. And... You know, I don't want folks thinking, you know, we, we talked about dreaming big and dreaming big is, is really appropriate, but this isn't going to be a dream. This is going to be a reality. Um, and the only way that happens is if we get everybody engaged, uh, with lots of people engaged. I mean, we have lots of things that go on all the time and people sometimes sit back and go, no one talked to me. Well, we're talking to everybody and everybody who wants to talk, we're going to listen to. And so I am really excited about this project. Uh, I think the enthusiasm, the excitement has come through loud and clear from everybody who's participated on this. I'm hopeful that inside of everybody that's listening right now that likewise got that little you know, energy that's going inside going, this is gonna be cool. How do we get engaged in this? How does this lift this city in a way that we've not done before? And with regard to energy, we've built it up for a year and a half, everybody. I mean, for crying out loud, we've been stuck at home watching Zooms. Now we get the opportunity to get engaged. And I am so looking forward to engaging so many people on this in a variety of different ways. So for the folks that are on tonight, thank you. 
for the folks that are on tonight, they're going to tell their friend and they're going to tell their friend and they're going to tell their friend tomorrow. Thank you very much. And the next time we do this, uh, we're going to get feedback from all of you. What level of, of, of participation would you want to get engaged in and how many more people we're going to get involved in this particular process? Because the theme through all of this, I think, has been loud and clear. It's inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. We want everybody at the table. Everybody needs to be represented because short of that, we're not going to hit what we want to hit. Uh, and this will be built from the ground up. So thank you for all of that. And I know I think we're going to roll into maybe let's talk. And we have done enough of that. Um, and we want to listen at this particular point in time. And I think that's a key piece um, of what you need to do. You know, we're always accustomed to wanting to talk more than we want to listen. But the, the more we listen, the, the greater ability we have to articulate what it is we do say. So we're here to listen too. So thank you. Everybody who wants to unmute and ask a question or say what next and how can I get engaged? And again, uh, as a follow up to this, you're all going to get an email with a follow up that's going to ask you some questions and how you might want to participate. And I want you to look forward to that email and um, be engaged in Mosaic Lowell. Because, you know, as Howard made reference, there was. The, our plan on this is after this plan, we, we finalize and submit what Bar has done with every other community foundation they have worked with is they had funded phase two and they have funded it with, with, with significant dollars. So this isn't just money for a study. We do this right. This is money for an implementation. And I think that makes a huge difference. And as, and again, you know, when we've got a partner in Bar that looks at this, loves the city of Lowell, they are very much engaged with the arts and the, and the inclusive diversity-ness of it. And where else but in Lowell? Um, I mean, when you, I love Sopan's uh, thing. You don't, you can travel the world without leaving Lowell. Well, thanks, Jay. So, so um, Jay, that's like a perfect, you know, your, your ask of, of engagement and involvement is a perfect way to segue into a kind of our Q&A. Um, you know, we've done a lot of talking and now we really want to spend some time listening and hearing from you all. Um, we want this to be interactive. As Jay said, feel free to unmute yourself, you know, put something in the chat, raise, use the raise your hand function. Um, I'm going to do my best to moderate the conversation. Um, I'm going to ask my fellow steering committee members to uh, help me out. If you see someone's hands raised and I haven't caught them yet, let me know. Um, but I think to kick things off, I'll, I'll throw out there, what, what did you hear tonight that gets you excited? What are you, you know, what have you heard from us that, that excites you about, about this planning initiative? Can yeah, I say something? I would like Austin, to sure. Um, I'm, my name is Sarah Bogosian. I'm the president and executive director of the Worcester House Museum of Art. I want to tell you that along with what's happening here, there's a lot happening statewide. I was just very fortunate and honored to be asked by uh, Senator Ed Kennedy and Representative Carol Fiola, Fiola, I'm sorry, uh, to work and, and to serve on a state committee, statewide state commission. And uh, what it was uh, involved in is seeing the impact of COVID-19 impact on, on culture, the arts and culture and tourism in the state of Massachusetts. We just finished writing the report. Uh, the report was completed yesterday. Our mission was completed yesterday, at least the initial mission of completing the report. It included such things as more funding for artists, youth art programs, which is very near and dear to my heart, collaboratives and partnerships throughout the state with all different types of organizations, nonprofits, whether they're arts or culture or not, in order to engage everyone in this, I think is very extremely important. There, we've set aside and we're trying for a statewide marketing plan uh, for this and uh, for digital assistance, uh, because we lost a lot uh, during COVID uh, financially and uh, in the creative arts economically, artists were, were the most hit of, of um, our population. And we are not only an art museum, a historic art museum and historic house, but we also represent a large and broad um, group of artists where the Lowell Art Association incorporated the oldest incorporated in the country. And I, I've strived through COVID to try to develop programs in which to help them because they were just so 
they were just devastated by this. Um, this particular commission not only involved, I was the only museum involved, um, but we also had the New England Museum Association head that was part of it. We had the head, Michael Bobbitt, the head of the Mass Cultural Council. We had theaters involved. We had dance troops involved. Um, there were about eight various um, uh, commissioners uh, across the arts that were involved. Uh, a lot was mentioned, just so you know, and you will have the opportunity to read the report. There's a press release coming out uh, before the end of the week that will give you a little bit of insight as to what we actually discussed. I was, actually, I was just thrilled to be a part of it because I was able to represent not only the Whistler House, the Lowell Art Association, the city of Lowell, but the Lowell Cultural District in which we are in. Um, so it was a great opportunity for us to show them too how we have worked with DEI, uh, diversity, inclusion. We've, at the Whistler House, we've been doing this for 25 years, by the way. I'm an immigrant myself. I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. So I am very, very eager to advance this conversation um, statewide and in the city of Lowell. I will tell you, I will tell you, when you talk to all of these other people that want to do this statewide in their specific locations, the group of people that were part of this commission were from all parts of the states and all different types of arts and cultural organizations and tourism. Um, I will tell you, Lowell is really doing it. And this idea of this mosaic is going to set it apart from everyone else because we're already doing it. We've got, you know, just in our Youth Summer Art Program, we have, we serve 20 different types of ethnic groups of children and it's low income and middle income children. So just so you all know that we are doing it, but we need to advance it even more. And I think this will get us to that other level, you know? Yeah, um, Sarah, that's awesome. That's really great. The involvement that you're doing statewide is terrific. I, and thank you for representing Lowell and all that you're doing there. So thank you for sharing that. I just want to make sure we give everyone a little, a little oh, time. I'm sorry. I'm okay. sorry. No, I just had to let you know. No, about I appreciate that. that. Thank you. It was a great way to get started to hear, hear that update. So thank you for all the work on that plan that you, that you put together. Um, I noticed Natalie Perez, your hand was up earlier. Did you still want to say something? Oh yeah, thanks. Um, I just had a question. Um, how can we share this um, committee and, and also will there be funding opportunities for future small businesses? As I know someone who is wanting to open up a gallery, an art gallery and maker space in Lowell. So I just wanted to share this with him so that way he could have the opportunity to maybe get some resources? Yeah, great, great questions, Natalie. I think, um, you know, we will send a follow-up email after tonight's meeting with information about how you can get involved. So um, please share that widely um, to your friend and to others who you think would be interested. Um, and to the specific question about resources, um, there are some currently in the city that, that, that this individual you're talking about may be, um, may be eligible for. So, um, you know, we should also talk offline. Um, but, you know, the, the hope is that this plan will identify what resources are currently available and where there might be some gaps. So, um, you know, if it's the case that there isn't enough funding right now that we find for the creative businesses, then that might be one of the, the goals or the outcomes of this plan. Um, so thank you very much for bringing that up. That's really important. Um, who else? Does Pat oh, sorry, Howard, go ahead. I was going to say, P Patty or Carl, I think it's one of you had your hand up. Yeah, please. You're unmuted. There you go. Well, we took it down, but uh, just a quick comment. You know, Lowell has great civic leaders. Um, and uh, over the course of the last 40 years, I've had the great good fortune to develop assets all over the country. Um, and, and none of the places I've worked are as well organized and, and as well run as Lowell. We're really lucky, uh, Jay and Howard, to have both of you uh, leading the Greater Lowell Community Foundation. This, the kickoff of this plan is something we're really excited to watch. Um, as the owner of Western Avenue, we've got 520 members of the creative class and an asset that we've developed over the last 15 years. 
Um, we're really happy to be part of Lowell and, uh, and happy to watch this and, and have Henry Marte on the steering committee. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's really terrific what you've done at Western Ave and we appreciate that. So, and thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, you've seen us in the very beginning, Allison. So. That's right, <laughs> really early. <laughs> um, Anthony, you had your hand raised? Yes, um, so thank you for uh, the presentation and actually thank you too for uh, the invitation. Uh, one thing that caught my, my attention was, I think uh, Suzanne mentioned about not bringing people to the table, but actually going to the different tables. And I think for me, I, I couldn't emphasize that more because you know the biggest challenge over time has been trying to get people to the table, you know, as that statement is called. And what, what ends up happening is, you know, there's so many pockets of little communities that never get to come to this table for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And so the effort to actually go to those tables where those people are, because, you know, these people thrive, these, those small pockets that you can go and find people thriving. Uh, but if you tell them come to your table, sometimes they don't see it from your end. So any effort to that towards uh, making that happen, I think for me excites me because it just means that you're gonna achieve, you know, get closer to achieving that part of having everybody uh, contribute to this project. Thanks, Anthony. Susan, do you want to speak briefly that? Because you're gonna be doing a lot with that. This you and your team will be helping a lot. I with I do. I've been planning for a long time and the least effective way to get people involved is to host a meeting and ask them to come. <laughs> um, and and uh, going out and finding those small pockets of people and um, discovering what everyone is doing and the delights of, of kind of local traditions and activities and um, is hard work. And it's hard work that's really worthwhile. And so we're in part depending on all of you to spread the word, but also to guide us, to be able to say, this is what you should be doing. And these are the people you can contact. And this is the church meeting you can go to, or this is a group that if you come and you listen, you will be able to be engaged because someone said it earlier, we don't know what we don't know. And, and this is hard work and it doesn't stop when the plan is written. It's really just the beginning. And if we don't plan, I like to say that how you plan is as important, if not more important than what you plan. And so we're trying to get that part right. So thank you. And, and I, would thank add you to, I would add to that, that if, you, if any of you would like to host a gathering and, and a gathering can mean so many different things. It does not have to mean a sit down and, and be talked at thing. It can mean something with includes some, a presentation, something that includes a training opportunity, something that, that, that makes it enticing for people to want to participate. Please be in touch with us. We, that's the help we need. We'd be happy to. Yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Krista. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Krista. I'm the founder of the Free Soul Arts Collective. We um, are a new organization with a mission to amplify voices of color through the arts. So we do plays, events, youth programs, and I'm just really excited about the idea of understanding space in Lowell. We're like a mobile nonprofit. We don't really have a headquarters. Um, our fiscal sponsor is the Greater Lowell Community Foundation. So we're all about access and kind of understanding. Oh, I saw that. Ha. <laughs> Um, so we're just all about access. I'm really excited about understanding available space in Lowell and how performance places could happen in kind of non-traditional settings. So that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. That's great. Can I, can I just say how exciting that is, Krista? Um, because in my work nationally with the Ford Foundation, understanding what arts groups have the most impact on community, it's ones that go out into the community. Um, and that is just so exciting to think about the whole community as your stage and your performance space. So really glad to meet you. Yeah, and I just want to add too, Krista, that um, that it, it's 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 groups like Free Soil, DIY Lowell. I see Chris Hayes on the call, and others that you know. It, when we did this plan like 10, 11 years ago, our cultural landscape was really different. Um, it was very, you know, we had a lot of amazing institutions and we still do, thank goodness. Um, 
And, but there's a lot that's changed. There's like these sort of like really amazing organizations bubbling up that we want to support and continue to, to grow here. And so, um, yeah, I'm so glad that both you, Chris and, um, and Krista are on this call and are and participating. So thank you. Um, Jerry. Yes, I'm Jerry Bizantz. Uh, I'm with a company called Image Theater. Since 2005, we've produced the works of over 100 playwrights. We've worked at the Whistler House with Sarah on many of our, our women's playwriting festival. Uh, before COVID, we had a very successful women's film festival. Uh, we did the uh, Keep Your Kids at Home Naughty Readings. Uh, we uh, uh, pretty much introduced the 10 minute play concept to the city of Lowell with Mill City Minutes when we first broke out. Um, and um, anyway, I, I agree with Chris that one of the biggest problems I think is a small space, like a, a black box space, mm -hmm. uh, right, Krista? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great? I mean, one of my favorite places to go to is in Newburyport, the Newburyport uh, Firehouse, for example, does it right. Um, they have a small space, they have a reasonable space. It, um, it seats about 140 people, really, when you think about it. But it's active uh, uh, 52 weekends a year. And there are all sorts of theater companies that come in there, dance companies, um, stand-up comedians. Uh, it's, it's just, at, it's always going. But we don't have a space like that. Mm -hmm. And I, there's a lot of space in the city. And man, oh man, I'm telling you, we have enough groups here. We have enough people that we can really keep something going like 52 weekends a year, something going on, some fresh new plays, new monologues or rap artists, whatever. I mean, you know, anything goes, but it's space, space, space. Mm -hmm. Final frontier. <laughs> and we ain't got it. <laughs> We'd love to get it. This is okay. exactly the kind of feedback. I mean, the one thing to in, in evaluating where to go with the plan is understanding what the issues are. And so feedback like this is so very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Allison, can, yeah. can I... I'd like to uh, offer the Whistler House Museum of Art. We have the Parker Gallery, which is in existence now, which, which might not be in six months because we're trying to plan a new um, um, arts and culture center. But Krista, I haven't had the opportunity to meet you, believe it or not. I'm amazed, but I know you were involved in the Girls Inc. event and I could not uh, attend that um, a virtual event. I've been involved with them for many, many years, but I welcome all of you. Jerry and I have worked together for years. It's been very successful. Our, uh, we have the historic house, but the Parker Gallery offers anywhere from 50 to 125 people that we can house. Uh, we do have a stage. I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a stage, right, Jerry? And, and we've worked with it uh, for many years, but uh, and the new facility will hopefully have something for, for will have something for uh, these types of events as well. But I welcome all of you or any kinds of meetings that you want to have uh, in the next couple of months, we'd be happy to host. So um, yeah. Thank you, Sarah, that's terrific. Just so you know, MRT called me today. We're going to be working with them on a production called Wild Horses. Um, they will be having maybe four to six nights at the park in the Parker Gallery, so um, stay tuned for that. But yes, uh, Krista, Jerry, please continue to, to 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 talk to me and work with me on 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 uh, different productions you might be that are forthcoming. Awesome. awesome. So I'm really mindful of folks' time. We did tell you we get you out of here by seven. Um, I see a, a hand raised by Michelle, so maybe we'll give you the floor and then we'll just kind of talk about the follow up, Michelle. Thank you. So I'm actually very, very um, impressed. I'm very excited for everything that you have um, coordinated and um, very grateful that Juan Carlos invited me to this because I am actually, I was born and raised here in Lowell and I grew up at the um, City Magnet School, Art Magnet School. I took fashion design at the vocational school. So I'm very well aware of a lot of the good stuff when it comes to art. I'm not a professional artist, but I know a lot of them across the board. So I have um, acquired the building located at 74 Middlesex Street in downtown Lowell. And I did it with an initiative to fill some gaps with regards to uh, the Hispanic community. Um, open to everyone, but there is a lot of them that are very artistic in music and art and whether it be dancing or singing, tons of comedians and also um, in ministry, reaching out to um, 
Christians as well. So we've had a number of worship nights here. We've had paint nights here. We have children learning how to sing and dance here. And we have a cafe here. And there's plenty of space for anyone that's interested in hosting something here. And I'm very much intrigued and interested in following through and being an ambassador to this and being very much involved with the whole entire program. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, you know, one of the questions we didn't get to, but I want to just leave it maybe with, with all of you to think about is, as Jay said, we don't, we don't all know what we don't know. So there might have been things you didn't hear us talk about tonight or something we might have missed. So please, in, you know, follow up with us, please send us emails, contact us, let us know what else we might be missing. But absolutely, we want you to stay engaged um, and involved. So Howard, maybe I'll just turn it over to you to wrap us up. That's not me wrapping up, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I love pandemic pups. Um, well, again, just echo what everybody else is saying. Thank you. Thank you one and all for joining us tonight. Uh, we're really, we're, we're grateful to have such a good group as a starting point. We hope that this will be the last one we ever do by Zoom. Um, the, you know, it's so much more fun to be in person and so much more fun to have these conversations and to have them just drift to the back of the room and chat about stuff. So lots of good stuff to look forward to. Thank you. We will send you a follow-up and we look forward to keeping the conversation just really going. So thank you one and all. Enjoy your night. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.